director, Ethel Gautier. North Division Director. Yeah. Uh, Dan Mandelovitz, Northeast Division Director. Thank you all for being here. The next wonderful thing I get to discuss with all of you today are those special little things called phone books. Do you have one? Please make sure it's not going to make any noise for us. The people that are competing this evening have worked really hard to get here. Each one has beat their own club and their area. So roughly each person is representing 600 people. So I think they deserve our respect, our applause, our laughter. Let's try not to give any tears. <laughs> show them we appreciate them and what they're doing by turning off our phones and being vocal. <coughs> the next thing, everyone should stay in their seats while someone's up here presenting. If you need to leave the room for any reason, please wait for the minute of silence between speakers and we ask that when you do so, to beware of the chair. They make quite a bit of <laughs> And with that, I get to say, let's do this!
our fellow Toastmasters and our guests. As we approach New Year's, we all make New Year's resolutions. So show of hands, how many have really done New Year's resolutions? All right, keep your hands up. Now, how many have actually kept their New Year's resolutions? Are you being honest with yourself? Great. What I want to share with you today is, it's called a wheel of life. Have you all seen that? It's like seven different aspects of your own personal human being. So it consists of contributions, emotions, relationships, those type of things. When it came down to me filling out my own evaluation, I noticed that I had a big deficiency in health and fitness. I had what's called a flat tire, or in my case, a spare tire. <laughs> so I decided to call upon my friend and fellow Toastmasters, Adam Phillip, who was the president of the Lake County Toastmasters, said, Adam, help me out here. I want to get myself fit. What do you recommend that I do to get myself fit? So Adam responds back to me. He says, go to the library and check out Richard Simmons. <laughs> I said, Richard Simmons? He must be like 70 years old now. All right, so I go to the library, and I have to notice that they are all in VHS form. <laughs> I felt like I was in a time warp here. So in the foreground, I'm here. I'm seeing Jane Fonda doing her buns of steel with her long leggings up and her physique. And then in the background, I'm hearing Olivia Newton-John singing, Let's Get Physical. So I thought, okay, I'll try this. So I decided to go to my computer and do a YouTube on Richard Simmons, since obviously no one's got, can play VHS tapes anymore. <laughs> and as I'm warming up, I'm putting on my headband, my wristbands, and I say, everyone, <clears throat> it's time to dance. So everyone stand up, let's dance, come on. Everyone get up. <laughs> yeah, we all this pizza, so I'm gonna go back and forth. No, no one's got rhythm here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm all set to play this tape. I get this twinge in my back. Oh my gosh, I was in pain. So I couldn't wait till my neighbor got home. I knocked on Ram's door, said, Ram, can you help me out with putting on this lotion for me? Ram was really excited about this, and I don't know. So I let him apply this lotion on my back because I couldn't get to it. So the next day, I had to go to my chiropractor and get the adjustment. Are there any uh, chiropractors here in the audience? Okay, I won't speak ill will of a chiropractor. <laughs> so I got the adjustment. I did not get the relief I was looking for. So I had to go to my own doctor and get pain pills. It turns out my chiropractor adjusted me and I developed a pinched nerve. This is really a true story. We take four things for granted on a daily basis, walking, eating, getting to the bathroom, and driving. I could not walk for three days. So my girlfriend had to come over the first night and bring over soup because I couldn't feed myself. The next day, I had to let my neighbors come in so they could get me out of bed and get to the bathroom. I said, that's fine, take it right there. I can get to the bathroom, that's fine. But imagine being by yourself and having no one to help you out. So the point I'm trying to make is you have to develop your own wheel of fortune and not have my misfortune. Thank you.
I'm at his club. So I'm in the Lake County Toastmasters Club.
have no idea. <laughs> so did he teach you any of the moves other than that? No, I mean, he was uh, basically a fitness guru that got people off their dots and just dancing to one of your calories. Have you seen him lately? I have not, so one of these guys, uh... Yeah, he, he's <laughs> in his 70s, right? I'm and um, still as thin as can be. No, he's crazy, and he still wears those short shorts. <laughs> Yeah, see, you're still part of my uh, thing that I can do. Okay, none of you remember what I said a year from now. Okay. <laughs> you said, okay, we're good with that.
Toastmasters, and especially Michael. Where are you? There you are. What a wonderful speech. You had us right away with the title. What was the misfortune? I was wondering, oh my gosh, this is going to be so interesting. And then you reached us all by saying, New Year's resolutions. Anybody ever have a New Year's resolution? And did you keep it? Good one. Then you incorporated humor in your speech when you said that you were looking at the videotapes and there was Jane Fonda with her buns of steel and you were talking about the wheel and your wheel had a flat tire but you had a spare. <coughs> so that was great. You incorporated all of that in your speech. So a couple of things I'd like you to work on for next time. You did a lot of pacing back and forth right here. Maybe you were nervous. This is a really big room and a lot of people here. The other thing was you tended to stay to this side of the room most of the time. So we need to make sure that we're reaching all the people in the room. And one way of doing that is coming over and actually speaking to them. So you could have used a certain segment of your speech or a certain point by standing here and talking directly to these people and then coming back to center. And that's something that we all need to work on because we all have our favorite side. I kind of like this side too, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Then I like the way you progressed in the speech and, and told us about your journey. You had a conclusion, but I was a little concerned that it was abrupt. There wasn't much of a transition. It was almost like you saw the red light and had to finish right away. I know that feeling. But what I'd like you to do in the future is give yourself a little time for a that longer conclusion because you had such a good message. We all need to take better care of ourselves. And you really want to drive that message home so when they leave the room, they take that message with them. But it was a great speech and I look forward to more. Thank you. Presence 
that I knew from that moment that it was going to be good. And that small little thing that you did really captured me as an audience member. The other thing that you did that was fantastic and you kept it going throughout your speech was the audience involvement. I mean, you got us up and dancing. That was great. I mean, we're all kind of used to the hand raise, the questions, but to actually get everybody up and out of their, their seats and doing the little, come on, Richard Simmons, we all know that. That was just fun. Lastly, the thing that I loved that you did was the humor. That's something that my dad, who is my kind of Toastmaster mentor, is always telling me. Humor, humor, humor. Kind of scares me a little bit. I don't know if I'm that comfortable yet with it, but you did a great job. Now, there's a couple things that I think that you could do a little bit better. And the first thing that I noticed was the use of your prop. So you had this cell phone, and you're having this conversation, but it was just kind of dropping, and it wasn't there. So it just kind of became awkward. So if you're going to use a prop, really use it. So I called my friend, and there I was. I was talking to him, and you're really actually using it instead of it just kind of like, yeah, I was talking on the phone, and now I'm just holding my cell phone. It's kind of awkward. So that would be one thing. The other thing that I think that you could do is, as you're using your space, you want to use your space. You want to pause and talk to your audience. And you want to naturally move around it. There is a pretty big space here tonight. So it might be a little bit of a challenge. But one thing I felt like you did was you kind of just pacing and talking to the audience. And so you just kind of kept moving the entire time. Instead of really finding a spot, delivering a few thoughts, and then moving on and speaking to this audience, finding a spot, and delivering. So that would be one thing to think about. Again, I think the stage is a little bit difficult. We're all kind of spread out, so you're probably trying to hit as many people as possible. Last thing, I want to go back to another reference that I loved, and that was the visuals. I loved the comments about Richard Simmons, the leggings, Olivia Newton-John, and even just the fact that your friend told you to go to the library is such a throwback kind of comment. Overall, Michael, I really enjoyed your speech. Thank you very much for being our target speaker this evening.
there was a few parts of your speech where you were making an emphasis point and you stepped into it. And I like when I see speakers do that because it's, it's a way to engage the audience. Uh, the other way you engaged was to have people stand up. And just the simple act of having people stand up helps bridge the gap and, and creates a stronger connection with them. I thought that was very well done. You mentioned Richard Simmons. Probably hands down the most energetic guy in the whole home workout routine. I'm glad to hear him getting mentioned again because he was he really does work hard. But then you mentioned VHS. Ooh, I felt old. <laughs> Inside, very smooth for the talk, very just boom out there. I did like that. I thought that was very well done. You also mentioned at one point about uh, if there are any chiropractors in the audience. Maybe it's just me, but I felt like there might have been a line or two there that may have been omitted. But I did. It still carried very well. The conclusion. It was good, it was salient to the, to the main point, maybe a, a touch stronger and kind of brings everything together. But overall, I very much enjoyed it, and I'd like to thank you again for coming out and delivering tonight. Thank you.
but I feel like I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't help you give this speech and make it even better next time. So my tip for you in that area would be to, first of all, have more fun with it. There were a lot of elements of this speech that you really could have played up. You had <coughs> funny things that were a little underplayed, the having, asking your neighbor to rub the lotion on your back. That could have been amusing, probably not a super comfortable situation for you. Also, having to have your girlfriend come over and bring you soup, you could have played the role of the ailing male. <laughs> <coughs> you had opportunities there. And I would love to see you really play them up and get your audience laughing. We don't have to feel your pain, but we certainly enjoy feeling the joy and having some fun with the speech. My second tip for you would be around the point of your speech. You told us the point of your speech. Toward the end, think about being by yourself and how difficult this is. And I was really kind of so caught up in the humor earlier in the speech that I didn't think about that. And I would have loved to have you sort of pull that in earlier so that we would follow that tale all the way through and get that feeling from you. You don't have to take away all the humor, but certainly you could have woven that theme into the entirety of your speech. But overall, it was a fantastic speech. I enjoyed it. And I applaud you for having the courage to stand up here and be a target speaker for us. Thank you. anymore. 
Mr. Cameraman with his VHS equipment. Then you started about the tapes you found and the old exercise tapes. And you mentioned Jane Fonda's uh, Friends of Steel tape. And at that point, I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I think I missed the next two minutes of you speaking. <coughs> but I got back to it. And then you told us about how we need to be able to take care of ourselves and make sure that we can drive and walk and eat and do the necessities of life and not have to rely on other people. So you encouraged us to do those things and take control of our own fortune. I would have liked to hear more. I wanted it to be just a bit longer. Hear more of your story, more of your experiences. You're a very engaging speaker. It's enjoyable to hear you. And I would like to hear a longer speech from you. Other than that, it was entertaining, great for the audience. Thank you so much. Toastmaster, we have all the balance.
Toastmasters person. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored and distinguished guests. Was that fun? Yes. 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 Want some more of that? Yes. All right. Then meet me at the fall conference, which will be on Saturday, November 7th. And guess what? We have a fantastic presenter, Craig Valentine, for those of you that don't know about Craig. He will be there giving fantastic presentations, so you'll get to hear more speech, more speech contestants for the speaking award, as well as hear from Craig Valentine. Again, that's Saturday, November 7th, and it will be in Warrenville, Illinois. Yep, okay. Countryside. 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 Okay, I want to make sure we got this right. Thank you. You guys are keeping me on my keys and cues. So mark your calendars for, again, Saturday, November 7th. Now, I'm also going to share with you one other item. I have the club ambassador who I'm working with to get out to the club in the various contests and tell you about the CAP program. It's a club ambassador program. How many of you are familiar with that? Oh, great. Then I can sit down. You know all about it. But just want to quick remind you, if you haven't signed up already, we're looking for people to go out and visit clubs. And there's a form that you'll use to evaluate or write down your notes. And from these forms, we'll select the club ambassador of the year. And in addition to getting out and interacting with people networking, you get a lot of recognition. Iqbal just showed me a great pin that you would receive once you go through the program as well as we'll select the Club Ambassador of the Year from the points that are, are tallied on that particular form. So if you have any questions, I'm staying until the end of the night, so feel free to catch me at break or afterwards. I'd be more than happy to talk with you. With that, that's the final question.